Hello guys, welcome back to Mr. Deep Coding channel. Now in this new episode of the KMM social media app series, we will write the short code for everything related to our post detail screen. We will mainly work on the post comment feature and at the end we will add a way to retrieve a single post because that's something we forgot to add in our previous videos. Now without further ado, let's get started. Alright, now as always, we first need to define our remote models. So for that, we will need to expand the post package, then come inside the data package. Here we need to create a new package and we'll name that one as model. And in this model package, we need to create a new Kotlin file that we'll name post comments model. Select file and hit enter. Now, of course, later I will bring also the models that we define inside of this common package for example this remote post model and remote post like models because uh, the way we have restructured our project they don't really need to be here anymore okay now of course uh, the first model we need is the one that represent the comment so we'll name this one as remote post comment we have the comment id the content now this represent the text the actual text comment we need the post id the user id the username the user image url and also the created date as a string next we need a data class to model the response body we get from the server when we request a page of comments for a given post we will name this one as get post comments response data it has a success a list of comments and a message for in case something went wrong on the server side then we will define another model we will name it as get post comment api response because we want to forward the http status code to our repository all right then for a single comment we will define comment response data now this has success a comment and a message now we will need this comment response data when we add or remove a comment so this is the response body we will get from the server we will also define comment api response to forward this http status code to the repository then lastly, we will define two models, new comments params and remove comments params. Now these are the bodies we send in the request when we need to add or to remove a comment. All right, next we need a way to communicate with our server. Now we could simply define new method inside the post API service class, but as you can see, this is getting quite large now. So instead, we will just define a new remote data source class for our post comment. We will do that inside um, the post package here. And then inside this data package, we will define a new directory. Let's name this as remote. Now in this remote directory, let's define a new Kotlin class. And we call this one as post comment API service. Of course, we need to extend the Ketor API class. And let's make this one as internal. All right, so at this point, you should already be familiar with the way we use Kato to communicate with our remote server. So I'm just going to paste on uh, the first method that we need here and start explaining. Now, the method name is a get post comment. And this is to retrieve a page of comment for a given post. Of course, it needs to, to be suspending. The method takes the user, uh, the user token, the post ID, the page and the page size. It needs to return get post comment API response. Uh, this is the model we have a default find here which has this get post comment response data now note that this get post comment response data is annotated with the serializable you will see why in a moment so coming back we of course need to import this get method on the http client let's also quickly import parameter so in the body of this get post comments we need to use client that comes from our ketor api and call the get http request method then in here we are setting the endpoint to be this forward slash post and then forward slash comments and forward slash post id we need to set the query parameters for the page and the page size and lastly we set the token this get returns an http response that we use to return a new instance of get post comment API response for the code we call HTTP response dot status and for the data we need to call HTTP response dot body of course we need to import this uh, body when we call uh, HTTP response dot body since the let me show you since this get post comment response data is annotated with actualizable the Kotlin actualization library will deserialize the JSON response that we get from the server into this get post comment response data cutting class. 
All right, the next method is to add a new comment. Now, this is pretty simple. Let me paste it here. So we have this add comment, which is a suspending, of course, and to which we need to pass the comment params and also the user token. It's going to return comment API response and in the body, of course, this is a post HTTP request that uh, let me first import this. In the body, we need to call client.post because this is going to be a post HTTP request method. We set the endpoint to be forward slash post and then comment and create. We set the body to be comment params and lastly, we set the token. Then we need to return a new instance of comment API response. For the code, we'll pass HTTP response.status and for the data, we'll pass HTTP response.body. Now, the remove comment follows the same procedure. So we have this remove comment method that needs to be suspending, of course. Now, this time for the comment param, we need to pass an instance of remove comments param and also we need to pass the user token. It returns comment API response and then in the body, we need to call client.delete. This is HTTP request uh, delete method. We set the endpoint to be post comment, then delete. We set the body to be comment params and we set a token. Calling delete returned HTTP response that we use to return comment API response. For the code, we pass status and for the body, we call HTTP response body all right so that's it for comment api service class let me close this okay so next we will need to define the repository for post comment but before that uh, let's go inside the domain package in here we'll need post comment model for the domain layer so let's first define a new directory we'll call this one as model and in this model directory, we need to define a new Kotlin class that we will name as post comment select data class and hit enter now, of course, for the properties, we will have comment ID, content, post ID, user ID, username, user image, URL, and created at. Okay, so we can close this post comment model. Now, coming here at the domain level, let's create another directory where we will put our repositories. So we create repository directory. Let's move post repository in here. Then inside, we need to create another interface for the post comment repository. So we will name this one as post comment repository, of course. <laughs> uh, select interface and hit enter. Let's make it internal. Now for this post comment repository, we will have a three method, the same as what we have inside post comment API service class, but with small differences in the input and the output. For example, here for get post comment, we don't need to pass the user token because we're going to use preferences to get the current user data. And we need to return result of a list of post comment. Then we have add comment that needs to return result of post comment and remove comment that also returns result of post comment. In the input, we have post ID for add and remove. And here we'll need to pass the content when you need to add a comment and we need to pass the comment ID when we need to remove a comment. Okay, so next we need to provide an implementation for post comment repository. So we will go inside the data and here we will also need to create a new directory for our repositories. In this repository directory, we will create a new Kotlin class that we'll name as post comment repository impl for implementation. Let's make it internal as well. Now, of course, this need to implement post comment repository and we need to provide uh, implementations for our three methods. Now, this post comment repository class need to be passed three dependencies. We will have user preferences, then we have post comment API service and dispatcher provider. All right, now coming here for the first method, get post comment, we need to return, of course, as usual with context dispatcher provider.io. Now, because this can throw exceptions, we will surround our call inside a try block and we first need to get the current user data. So we will use preferences.get user data. After we get the current user data, we will use post comment API service class to make a get post comment request. The response will be stored inside this API response. We need to pass the user token. So for that, we call current user data token. We'll pass the post ID that was passed here, the page and the page size. After we get API response, to make things simple, we will just check to see if API response.code is HTTP status code.ok. And in that case, we need to return a success result. And for the data, we will pass API response.data.comment. And we need to map each comment and convert the remote comment to domain post comment. We are going to define this method in a moment. Now, if the HTTP status code is not ok, which means there was an error, we need to return result of type error. And for the message, we will pass API response 
message. If uh, this is null, then we need to pass an unexpected error. Okay, so let's open model, then post comment model. We need to scroll up and in here we'll need to define our to domain post. Um, how did we call it? To domain post comment. And of course here we will need to return a new instance of post comment all right so now let's go back inside post comment repository and you can see that the error is gone okay so then for the catch blocks if we catch an io exception we are going to return result of type error and for the message we will tell the user that they may face an internet issue or for any other type of error we will just need to catch any throwable and return result of type error for the message we'll just say that we got an unexpected error they should try again all right, now adding a comment is fairly simple and it follows the same procedure. Let me add a little bit of space. Now I will directly paste the method code here and explain. So first of all, we switch the operation to the IO trade. Then inside the try block, we first get the current user data by calling preferences.getUserData. Then we instantiate a new comment params instance. We pass the user ID as current user data.id. After that, we make the API call by calling post comment API service dot add comment for the user token. Again, we use current user data dot token. Then if the API response code is okay, Okay. In that case, we return result success. And for the data, we pass API response to data dot comment and we convert that to domain comment. If the HTTP status code is not okay, in that case, we pass result error. For the message, we pass a data dot message. If the message is null, in that case, we pass an unexpected error as the string message. For the catch blocks, it's pretty much the same. If there was an IO exception, we pass no internet error. And for any other type of error, we just pass an unexpected error for the error message. All right, now. Now, removing a comment is also simple. Let me paste the code here. So we first get the current user data, then we instantiate a new remove comment params instance. After that, we make the API request by calling post comment API service dot remove comment. For the token, of course, we pass current user data dot token. Then if the API response code is okay, we return a new comment. Now this comment here, although we are uh, deleting the comment, the server will return normally a comment if it couldn't delete that comment or it will return a null comment. That's why, as you can see, for the return type we are returning result of a nullable comment because this comment here might be null then if the http status code is not okay we return result error and we pass the message for the cache blocks we return no internet error for the io exception and an expected error for any other type of error all right so after the repository we need to define use cases so let's go and expand the use case package in the domain package now we'll create our first use case class and we'll name this one as get post comment use case we need to make this a coin component in order for us to inject the repository so here we need to inject the post comment repository then we simply need to override the invoke operator function we need to make it suspendable and we'll call repository dot get post comment we'll pass the post id the page and the page size that was fairly simple now let me close all this the next use case class is to add a new comment. So let's create a new Kotlin class. We name this as add post comment use case. We'll make it coin component as well. Okay, so then we need to override the invoke operator function. We need to make it suspendable. And here we are checking it to see if the content is blank. In that case, we return result error and say comment content cannot be empty. Otherwise, we just call repository to add a new comment. Okay, so then for the last use case for this comment feature, we need to create a new class that we name remove post comment use case. Make it coin component. Inject the repository. And then we just override the invoke operator function one more time and we call repository.remove comment. We pass the post ID and the comment ID. Okay, now so far we have worked on the post comment feature, but in our past episode, we didn't define a way to get a single post from our server. So let me close this. So we will go inside the common package, then we need to expand the data. Let's expand the model package and open remote post models. Now, right below post API response, here we need two models. Let me get a little bit of space. 
So we will define here two models, post API response data. Now this is the response body that we will get when we need to request for a single post. And then we have this post API response because we need to pass this HTTP status code. Now let's close remote post models. And if we expand the remote package here and open post API service, now right below get user post, we will define another, um, another method to get a single post. Okay, so we will name this one as get post because we want to get a single post. We need to pass the token, the post ID for the post we want to retrieve and the current user ID. It should return post API response at the model that we have defined uh, a minute ago. Then in the body, we call get on the client and we pass the endpoint to be post forward slash post ID. We pass the parameter for the current user ID and we set the token. Using this HTTP response, we return a new post API response instance for the code we'll pass status and for the body we will call and um, for the data we will call response.body. Then next we will go inside post repository, open post repository interface and below get user post we need to add a new method to get a single post it's going to return result of type post and we need to pass at the post id let's go inside the post repository implementation class and of course here we need to provide an implementation for this newly added method. Now you are already familiar with the procedure. We first get the current user data. Then we make the API request by calling post API service dot get post. We pass the token user data dot token. We pass the current user ID user data dot ID and we pass at the post ID that was passed to this method. If the HTTP status code is okay, then we return our success result. We pass the data as API response to data dot post to domain post. And if the HTTP status code was not okay, <laughs> then we need to pass, uh, we need to return result dot error. And for the message, we'll just pass API response to data dot message. For the catch block, we just need to check if it's an IO exception, then we need to return no internet error. And for any other type of exception, we will just catch any throwable and return unexpected error. All right, so lastly, we will need to define a use case. So here in the use case directory, we need to create a new Kotlin file that we will name get post use case. Now in here, the get post use case is fairly simple. We just need to make this class as a coin component to inject the repository. And then we override the invoke operator function and we call repository.getPost. Now, lastly, let's go and expand the DI directory and open shared module.kt. Now below the post module, um, this post module here, we will define post comment module and the dependencies we need to provide here are post comment API service class, the three use cases, get post comment use case, add post comment use case and remove post comment use case and then the post comment repository. Now, of course, don't forget to add in the post module this get post use case because we'll need also this get post use case dependency in our view model. Scrolling down for the return list of our shared module, we need to pass here the post comment module. All right, guys, now that's it for this episode where we have worked mainly on the shared code for the post comment feature. Of course, we also added a way to retrieve a single post. In the next episode, we will be on the Android side to work on the post editor screen where we'll make use of all this shared code we have written today. Now, as always, take care. I will see you in the next episode. Bye.